cover something this morning. Uh, what's good, got it? I want to cover some things this morning. Um, Nemo in the building was goody boy. So one of the main things that I really want to cover is um, memory. Memory and how memories work. Also, how memories are tied to extreme moments. And the more extreme the moment, the more upfront the memory is, the more diluted the moment is, the more like pushed back into the mind the memory is. So, um, one thing we got to understand as people is everything that walks past our eyes we remember our brains are like phones and hard drives and everything else you don't necessarily lose the files even when you delete them you don't necessarily lose them they just push somewhere else in the back of your mind a way to retrieve those memories is trauma certain scenarios can push the memories back forward now one thing about us as human beings right we have so much technology in front of our faces that we don't really know how to maneuver the technology inside of our mind the human body is literally a machine whether you want to understand it or not we work off electrical pulses right the human body is literally a walking computer. That's all it is. It's an organic computer, but it's technically a walking computer. We work off electricity. So, one of the things that I've been able to do, just based off me being like kind of sober for so long, and I understand like what you know, what substances do to you, even psychedelics, right? By me being sober for so long. I've learned how to navigate through my own mind. Kind of like, what do you call it? Like when you go on the computer and you go through search, right? You go to the search bar and then your computer like looks for whatever you need to do, right? What I'm saying is I've learned how to do that over the last couple of years, maybe like the last 10 years, I've learned how to go. Okay, I got it. Now, like, my memories are so vivid. My memories are extremely vivid. I can remember everything down to the exact clothing I was wearing. I can remember everything back to everybody that was there. I can remember everything almost to, like back to when I was maybe like six months. I could remember all the way back to like six months. And the furthest memory I could remember, and I've told y'all this numerous times, the furthest memory I could remember, and I'm and when I told my mom this, she was like, how the fuck you remember that? And I was like, I remember it like it was yesterday. I was maybe about six, seven months my mom then was at church. The name of the church is Greater Bethany Church. Right? No, 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 it wasn't Greater Bethany. It was another church, and I think it was on like Vermont or something. Right? My mom then was in the bathroom getting ready. My mom, my auntie April, and um, my auntie, like all my, my aunties was in the bathroom getting ready. They was all putting on makeup. I remember this like I was a kid. It was all putting on makeup. I'm just like, what the fuck y'all putting on y'all face, right? I was a kid, but I'm like, we're at church. I knew we were at church, and I knew this was like a good place to be. But in my mind, I'm like, why are y'all putting this stuff on y'all face? I'm, I'm, I'm like six months. I remember just looking at them in the mirror. Everybody in the mirror putting lipstick on. I remember this shit like it was yesterday. And my mom dropped me off at the kids club. Like, you know, the little babysit daycare shit. I remember I got to the daycare. All the kids were crying. Everybody was crying. I remember sitting right there. Everybody were crying. And I was looking at the kids. What are y'all crying for? Mom's going to come back. This is what I was... 
I was trying to say to them, but I don't think I had the words. I don't even know how to use my mouth like that yet. I'm like, yo, why are y'all crying? Why are y'all crying? Moms are going to come back. So I started giving kids toys. Like, whatever toy I had, I remember, like, just holding the toy out like that. Like, anybody want a toy. I remember this. When my mom, when I told my mom about this, she couldn't believe it. She's like, wait, how the fuck do you remember that? Like, it reminds you, one of my aunts was also the daycare provider. So when they brought it up, when I brought it up to them, she's like, how the fuck you remember that? Remind you, they remember it too once I broke it down to them. When I, when I told them, they was like, how the hell you remember that? It was like six months. I was like, I just remember. So the thing is, right, it's very easy to go backwards inside of your mind. You have to find a trail. It's a trail. The thing is, look, I know there's a lot of people saying, how? How do you remember that far back? And that's the problem. The truth is, how do you not remember that far back? These are the questions we got to ask ourselves. Instead of saying, how do you remember that far back? The real question is, how do you not remember that far back? That's a real question. No, that's, that's an actual real question that you have to ask yourself. How do you not remember that far back? Don't ask, how do you? How do you not? For me, every moment of my life, I looked at it as an extreme moment. Everything that happened, I looked at it as an extreme moment. The thing with some people is when y'all go through things that you feel scare you or you're afraid of or you don't really like, what you do is you tuck them, them memories. One thing about those memories is they create black holes, right? If you tuck a memory... Like, if it's something that you really don't want to remember no more, and you tuck that memory, it creates a black hole inside your mind. And there's other things that get sucked into that black hole that you don't want in that black hole. So, some memories fade away. Day by day, memories fade away. Me, I think my hard drive inside my head is like maybe full or possibly going to be full because I have this weird thing that I remember everybody that walked by me. Like, I've always had a very good photo... What do you call it? Photogenic memory? I've always had a very, very good photogenic memory. I can remember a distant moment. I can remember every... Every... I can literally remember everybody that walked by me. Like, if I see somebody again, I'm like, yo... Like, for example, when we be at Disneyland, I see the same people... As much as many people it is at Disneyland, I keep seeing the same people. I'm like, I remember that person by the boom. Okay, I remember this whole group of people by the boom. Like, how the fuck they over here, right? There's a lot of people here, but how the fuck I keep remembering everybody? Like, I have a very, very good photographic or photogenic, whatever the fuck you call it, photographic memory, whatever the fuck you, photogenic. Photogenic is like you like in the pictures, whatever, whatever. So photographic memory. I have a very good photographic memory. And I think that came from one of my skills, which is drawing. Like, I can draw very, very good. Like, very, very good. Like, I can look at something and I can draw it. So, I think over my many years of drawing, yes, I said it. I can draw very good. I can do everything very Like, I'm very good at literally everything. I'm just not the best at certain things. But I'm, like, like if, if I had a 2K rating player, I'd be, like, 95 at everything. Like, like literally everything down the line would be 95. I just, I'm not a 99 at nothing. Right? All right. Now, when you draw, when you're an artist or you're a painter or whatever, you know what you do. You take a picture, you snap the picture in your mind, then you transfer the picture from your mind to your arm to your fingertips, and it prints out like a printer. Right? This is actual, this, this happens. Like when you're drawing, like you got to really think. It's like a pinner. You like your mind goes, and then the image goes from inside your head, through your arm, out your fingertips, like a printer, bro. Like an actual printer. Like I don't think people really look at it from that perspective, but that's exactly what's happening. So when you really like 
with me, like I said, I had a very, very good photo, photographic memory coming up. So, like, now when I see things, I, like, blink and I lock it in, lock it in, lock it in, lock it in, lock it in. When you start to understand the eye, right? The eye is the iris, right? The blink is the shutter, right? Or shutter close or whatever, right? When you zoom in, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show y'all how a camera works, and I want y'all to do this right now. The eye literally works like a full frame or a medium format 50 millimeter. You have two medium format 50 millimeter lenses. They work exactly the same. Maybe 24 millimeters. But the eye also has the ability to go. It's like a kind of like a small telephoto lens. Like it has the ability to go from a zoom lens to a 50, right? You can go from, I mean, it has the ability to go from like a fucking 10 millimeter or maybe an 8 millimeter wide angle lens to a 50 millimeter lens within a set. It's the same exact way. Also, your eye goes from 1.8. These are all camera shit. Your eye goes from 1.8 to nigga whatever actually you go it go deeper than one point you got like a 0.0.1 lens right so i'm gonna give you a test right now put your finger in front of your face but look past your finger right your finger is out of focus look at your finger what happens the background gets blurry look at your finger right in front of you look at your finger like put it like that far in front of your face and look at your finger. What happens? The background gets blurry. The depth of field. Right? It is the same way a camera works. A camera works exactly the same way. 50 millimeter lens works exactly the same way. When you look like that and you blink. Every time you blink, right? So hold your finger in front of your eyes and look at your finger and focus out the background, right? The background is blurry. When you blink, you can still see your finger a little bit. It takes a picture, bro. Every blink is a picture. You just don't know where the picture goes or how to save it or how to access it. Every blink is a picture. So when you blink, it's a picture. You can still see your finger, but the memory starts to fade away, right? And you don't really know where it goes because the memory is going backwards. It has to fade away. These are the... They are the small, like the little small things that people don't really pay attention to. So what I'm saying is this, right? Everybody has this ability. Everybody, everybody. It's just you have to you have to realize where the picture goes. Storage. We all have storage. I don't know how many gigs we got. We all got storage. We gotta remember where the picture goes. Me, over my many years of just really sitting back thinking inside of my own mind, I've been able to navigate through my brain. Right. One thing I've learned over the years, especially coming up in urban areas, our focus is trauma incidents, aggression field incidents are stories that will make people look at us aggressively. So these are the things we remember. It's crazy because, all right, so my memory is so deep that I remember shit that be putting me in fucked up situations, bro. So I'm going to tell you one thing that hurt me. I'm going to tell you a story that hurt me. I told you all this story before, but I'll tell you again. So I had a childhood friend that I grew up with. His name was Lawrence. It was Lawrence and Tyrone. I don't know if y'all can find them. If you can find the homie Ha Ha and them. But Lawrence and Tyrone. These are like my close friends coming up in elementary, right? I remember them because I never, I can't forget them. Right? Tyrone was like my guy. It was a hoop all the time. Lawrence is like my, my guy, right? They used to stay in like a foster home right there off of, what is that? Is that Grandy? I forgot what, but it's like literally right off of, it's like right off of Century, at the end of Century, right there by the little flower pot, right right behind Food for Less, they used to stay at like a foster home right there. But anywho, so Lawrence, recent, mom, this may be like seven, eight, but maybe like 10 years ago. I think it was like 10 years ago. I was getting off the train at the Union Station. I seen Lawrence at the Union Station. I walked up to him, I'm like, Lawrence. He's looking at me. Like, Lawrence, what's up, bro? He's looking at me like, who is you? Lawrence, my nigga, it's me, Devon, nigga, 102nd Street School. Like, nigga. He like, ah, bro, I don't remember you. 
I'm like, Lawrence, my nigga. Your name Lawrence, right? He's like, yeah. Nigga, you Tyrone people, right? Yeah. Lawrence. Nigga, we used to flip on the monkey bars all day. Like, you don't remember? Nigga was like, nah, bro. Nah. Bro, I was hurt. This is my childhood friend. He ain't remember. I was hurt. I said, he must have went through some shit in life where he tucked all his memories. He didn't remember. No, nah, but maybe he went through things in his life that he was like, man, I just tucked certain memories. He didn't remember, bro. Bro was looking at me like I was crazy. I'm like, damn. My memory is too deep. I remember everybody, bro. I remember I remember my whole class from Lance, Jamel, Antonio, Ozzy, Griselda, nigga, Elizabeth, Meredith. I remember every bro, I remember everybody. I remember my whole class. I remember my nigga, one of my first teacher I ever had, Miss Yamaguchi, dog, went to Mark Twain Elementary. I remember her. I remember everybody. I I I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I remember every like every moment of my life. I remember walking through the alley. Like, I remember walking through the alley, going to school. My big brother used to walk us all to school. We, then he used to go to his class to drop us off. I remember all of this shit, bro. But look, I, it's not that I have a good memory. Don't say that I have a good memory. It's not that I have a good memory. It's not that I have a good memory. It has nothing about a good memory. It's more that I have a practice memory. Right. I have a practice memory, right? My memory is all repetition. Like I've I've spent many years of my life going, okay, remember this, okay, do that, okay, take that. Mental notes, mental notes, mental notes, mental notes, mental notes, mental notes. Mental, 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 mental. Then when I got into battle rap. That boosted my memory to infinity. Right. Let me break it down again. When I got into battle rap, like when I started doing battle rap, that in general boosted my mentality to 8 billion of quantum mechanics, or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to break this down to you why. And I'm going to break this down to you why hip-hop should most definitely respect battle rappers a lot more than they do. I notice in the hip-hop community, they don't really give battle rappers credit in the rap game. And I, and I think they should get more credit because the memory preparation that you have to go to to write memorize and perform a rap battle is like no other right no I'm, I'm keeping it real with you the memory the memory preparation that you have to go to to prep for an actual rap battle memorize the rap battle on top of memorizing the, the rap battle Rap the rap battle in an environment where people are pulling on your shirt, tugging you, kicking, like not kicking you, but pushing you around stage. People, people in an environment where people are trying to make you mess up. Now, this is the thing. Not only are you just going up there rapping words. Most battle rappers are high end linguistics and like they're high end linguists and don't even know. Right. Well, hear me out Most battle rappers are high end They're high level linguists And don't even know But that's the term for it They're, they're linguists The amount of metaphors The amount of entendres The amount of like similes the, This shit it sees any college professor The amount of metaphors, the amount of tantras, the amount of similes, the amount of double similes, the amount of fucking palindromes, the amount of fucking the uh, index of Cali, the amount of all, the amount of all the things that is going into an actual battle rap is literally like scholar level linguists. 
And the fact that you have to remember five minutes worth of this per round, right? We're talking about five minutes worth of quadruple entendre palindromes, reverse semiotics. You have to remember five rounds of these. I mean, you have to remember three rounds of these five minutes each with people trying to mess you up. Going to preparation for rap battles literally unlocked another form of memory inside of my head. It's kind of crazy when you really think about it. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give y'all some tips. I was just going to do that. Um, uh, My guy. I was going to give some tips on how to have a better memory and how to really lock in a better memory. One of the first things to have in a better memory, right? One of the first things to have in a better memory is being happy. Listen, one of the first tips to having a better memory is being happy. It's going to be hard to have good memories when you're not happy because when you're not happy, only memories that are going to lock in your head are the negative ones. Listen, when you're not happy with some, whatever it is in life, when you're more focused on the negative aspect of life, you're going to only lock in bad memories. You're not going to really lock in the good memories. They're going to be obsolete. So the first step is find out how to be happy. What is your happiness? What creates your happiness, right? So, before I could even give you a step to how to lock in the memories, I have to tell you that you gotta be happy. Step one, how to be happy is you gotta find the things that make you happy. And if you can't find the things that make you happy, then nine times out of 10, you a demon. And if you're a demon, Hey, there's a bridge somewhere for you to jump off. We don't need people like you in this world. It's a harsh reality, but you just going to spread your negativity to somebody else. So, hey, just go on and check out, big dog. Other than that, to the people that can make themselves happy, there's a lot of ways that you can make yourself happy, right? One of the main ways you can make yourself happy is watch happy shit. No, look, watch happy shit. Watch these five movies in a row, and you be OD happy. Movie number one, Kung Pao. Watch Kung Pao. If you don't laugh at Kung Pao, something wrong with you. I'm just keeping it all the way 5,000. If you don't laugh at the movie Kung Pao, something is literally wrong with you. Like, you're broken, right? Watch Kung Pao as number one. Right. Number two, Pootie Tank, right? Number three, don't be a menace to South Central while drinking your juice of the hood, right? Number four, scary movie one, two, three, four, five, right? Oh God, watch these movies. My nigga, you gonna be on the floor, dead, bro, literally. Right? No, listen to me. Watch these three movies, you gonna be another level of dead, right? And the fifth one, you gotta watch, you gotta go back, my nigga. You, it's, it, the fifth one is tied. Either you can watch I'm Gonna Get You Sucker, or you can watch Black Dynamite. Either black, no, watch Black Dynamite because that's more modern. And y'all probably don't really know the niggas from I'm Gonna Get You Sucker. So watch Black Dynamite with Michael, Michael J. What does it mean? Uh, Michael. Michael White. Michael J. White. Yeah. Whatever his name is. Those, those three movies, I mean, those five movies will literally have you done. Oh, don't don't add Blank Man into the, the category. You add Blank Man in there, you asking to die for real. 
Oh God, you add Blank Man in there, you asking to really die for real, for real, in real life. My nigga. Watch those five movies in a row. I don't care what you going through in your day. Watch them five movies in a row and you going to be in a better position in life. In life. Right? So, boom. That's the first step. Right? You can watch Spongebob too. Spongebob be having me crying, my nigga. Patrick really an idiot. Patrick got to be the best... I wish I had a friend like Patrick. He like stupid smart. Like he like smart, but he's stupid in the motherfucker. Yo, I be crying watching SpongeBob. But look, Napoleon Dynamite, dummy funny. So it's a lot of movies that's funny. But the moral of the story is you gotta start watching happy stuff, bro. That's the first step to being happy. Changing what you see, and what you listen to, what you hear, right? That's the first, first, first step to being happy. Just just changing what you like watch also first step to being happy is changing the people you hang around you got to not hang around negative people and not hang around people who don't want to be happy you got to hang around people who's really always in a joking mood friends who joke a lot are important also you got to be able to take a joke right and some of y'all can't really take jokes on god where we from our homies shoot jokes all day man look at him under the sea dog rat look, look at him oh god he ugly he ain't move ugly god he not hear that you gotta be able to take a joke cause where I'm from the homies shoot jokes all day my mama soon as you walk up man look at him man what's them oh god them bullshit what's them 501's my mama them but where you got them from the alley Oh, God, the homie's going to shoot plenty of jokes ASAP. So you got to surround yourself around people. You got to surround yourself around happy people. God, happy people. That's one thing I ain't going to lie. I'm going to tell you, that's one thing that stopped the hood from being depressed. Because, like, where I'm from, you know, people don't really get down about stuff. We be down about life, but, oh, God, nigga, man. What's wrong with you? Depressed. Look at that. Oh, God. Look at him. He depressed. My mama. Depressed head ass. What's wrong with you? Bench press head ass. Copy machine press head ass. Oh, God. We gonna press you. AD pressing. Oh, God. That's what they gonna tell you. You come over there talk about you depressed. The homie D gonna press you. Hey, Big D pressing. Oh, God. What? They gonna shoot plenty jokes. So the homies be like, well, I ain't depressed no more. What the fuck you talk about? Right. So no, right? So that's the thing, right? You got to surround yourself around happy people. Surround yourself around people willing to joke. Also surround yourself around laughter, right? Because laughter is contagious, right? It's very contagious. You can laugh in a room right now and people going to start laughing not even knowing you can laugh in the room. Look, see right now, see how that feels? See how y'all, see, whatever feeling y'all got right now where y'all posting the crying faces, see how that feels. It feels good, right? It feels good. And nine times out of ten, you gonna remember AD pressing. Right? Nine times out of ten, you gonna remember that. You gonna be like, yo, this nigga daylight. He, the nigga said the nigga was depressed and then the homie named depressed him. That's a bar. You gonna remember that because it's funny. It's a happy memory. You gonna remember it. That's what I'm saying. So you gotta you gotta attack your inner happiness. When you happy, you happy about life and it feels good to you, boom. Right? That's the first step to a good memory. You got to get yourself in happy conditions. Once you get yourself in happy conditions where nothing can break your spirit, your mind is a lot more clear. You can see backwards. When you're in a sad state, you see forward. Only thing you see is what can make me better? Not what happened in the past. I don't care about the past. What can help me right now? Then you look for outlets, drugs, whatever, whatever. And those be your main focus of your times. And your, you get what I'm saying? When you're sad, 
You just look for what can help you right now. You're not looking for the good moments. So, what I'm saying is you got to figure out how to get happier so you can go backwards. When your mind is clear, you go backwards. Now, look, I know a lot of y'all do drugs. A lot of y'all smoke cigarettes. So, to all my people that smoke cigarettes, you smoke cigarettes nine times out of ten because you stress. It ain't no way you should smoke cigarettes. Cigarettes stink. You know they not good for you, you know all type of shit, but you be really stressed, so you're like, fuck it, let me hit the cigarette, fuck it, it's a stress reliever. So on God, I'm going to tell you this, since you're already smoking on God, you might as well have fun while you're doing it on God. So look, just extra your cigarette out on God. Oh, Just extra it out, just make yourself laugh on God, you got to just bother people on God, go in front of the store. <laughs> Oh God, get a pack of cigarettes. Let me show you. This is what you gotta do. Look, let me show you. My mama, so y'all can see. Yeah. God, you walk in front of the stove, right? You like this. Hey, man, get my get your, get your ass over there. Oh God, you walk in front of the store. Gonna hit the cigarette. Might as well have fun doing it. On oh God, ain't no need to be smoking cigarettes, stressing out, man. You might as well, you might as well have fun on your way out. Oh God! Look, my nigga, ain't no need to be smoking cigarettes, stressing out. You might as well, God, you might as well go out with a bang. Have fun while you're doing it. Overdo it. Oh God. Man, fuck the bullshit. Smoke the whole pack at once. Oh, God. Just look, my mama. Just go like this, right? This is the whole pack of cigarettes. Oh, God. Shake it up. Put the whole box in your mouth. Fuck it. This is my box for the week. Oh, God. Fuck it. Fuck it. Oh, God. Might as well. Fuck it. Oh, God. Look, bam. You record it. Put it on YouTube. On God, all the people going to be laughing. You're going to be in the comments. On God, you get in the comments. You see all the people laughing at you in the comments. He's funny. Then you're going to be like, man, I like being funny. That's dope. Then you're going to start doing all type of tricks with your cigarette. Then you're going to become the infamous cigarette YouTuber. On God. Yo, I'm going to hit y'all right back. Mm-hmm.